I got your pathology report back and you have skin cancer, melanoma. So of course I, I freaked out I mean, because automatically when I thought you have cancer, you, you die. Um, but I've learned that that's not exactly the case. I never thought it was that serious and it ended up being uh, stage four melanoma. From that point on, it has been um, you know, going at it with Mass General Hospital uh, at my side and uh, Beth Israel. It was you know, a life-changing experience. Your life changes in, in an instant. Melanoma really, I think it disproportionately impacts young women. Right now it is the number one cancer in women ages 25 to 29. I believe it's number two in women ages 30 to 35, just behind breast cancer. If melanoma is detected early, it can be stopped. Well, obviously it's important to me because of my diagnosis. Being diagnosed with something with something like melanoma is hard to take because a lot of people don't know what it is or what it's all about or how we get it. Education is crucial, and that's where your dollars will go. When you lay out in the sun and become tan, the body is trying to create a shield, if you will, uh, that absorbs the damaging ultraviolet radiation. Now, ultraviolet radiation interacts with the DNA in your skin cells and potentially cause mutations. UVA stands for ultraviolet aging. UVB stands for ultraviolet burning. Which would you rather do, age or burn? So these cells then start dividing, or these cells in some way become more resistant to death. So you have increased survival of cells, and you have increased proliferation of cells, and that is when tumors grow. So it is the effect of ultraviolet radiation on the DNA causing mutations that we're most worried about. I first tried tanning beds when I was about 15 years old, getting ready for the sophomore semi. You know, a group of us went down and, you know, I think it was like an unlimited month you could buy for $30. It was the big deal, so we all went and it was an outing after school, something to do. Um, and, and it was a big race who could get darker. Um, I, I still have friends that, that go, and, and these are 30-year-old girls who should know better. People are still out there on the beaches, you know, spending hours a day exposing themselves to really harmful ultraviolet radiation just for the sake of looking, you know, healthy and tan, which as we know now, there's no such thing as a healthy tan. This has to reach a level where people understand how important it is and that uh, they have to keep their kids out of the sun. They have to uh, be vigilant themselves. Uh, that vanity uh, is something that uh, you know doesn't replace health. I've stayed involved with what is now the Melanoma Foundation of New England because I think they're doing important work educating the public about the risks of sun exposure and the importance of early detection. It is like a thundercloud comes down and changes your whole life overnight. It does not, um, it isn't subtle. Now melanoma comes in four different stages, one through four. I was diagnosed with stage two, borderline stage three, which means I basically missed the boat on having to go through any chemotherapy or radiation, uh, but still had to go through a lot of surgeries. SPF, or sun protection factor, is based on a measurement of how red your skin becomes with a certain amount of um, ultraviolet radiation dose. So if your skin becomes red in one hour, um, an SPF 30 cream will allow you to stay out 30 hours in order to get the same level of redness. The tanning beds emit UVB, which is the okay. burning rays, which are the worst kind, the okay. worst of the two uh, kinds of rays, because those are the ones that actually penetrate uh, the upper layers of the skin and burn you. Yeah. Uh, okay. And that's why when you look at sunscreens, you'll see broad spectrum. So they'll be UVA and UVB protective. You want to make sure that whenever you use any type of protection, it is broad spectrum and it attacks both of those uh, forms of rays. Of course, uh, an organization like uh, the Melanoma Foundation cannot survive without funding. I don't even know how to say thank you to people who would take time out of their day, not to mention three or four women who ended up getting their head shaved um, I, and, and donating their hair uh, for the wigs of uh, cancer victims. I mean, you know, what type of world do we live in where we can't have that as one of the first stories on the news.
if we could have more corp corporate sponsors, the, all the profit from this, this event would go directly toward our programs. I believe strongly that survivorship carries a great responsibility with it, and I wake up every morning very aware of the fact that I'm here today when five years ago, you know, according to the doctor's prognosis and statistics, it, it wasn't at all a guarantee. Right now I'm involved in an advocacy program which is called Billy's Buddies, and it's going to help people who are currently dealing with a melanoma diagnosis or treatment um, by providing them with a one-on-one -on -one volunteer who can assist them. So I would like to encourage you today to open your hearts as well as your wallets and contribute to the Melanoma Foundation. Thank you for giving.